Okay, today we're gonna move and start talking about treatment of hyponatremia. First of all, why do we worry about hyponatremia? Why all this worry? Why do we need to treat it? It's simply because we said with decreased sodium concentration, right? This will lead to a shift of the water from extracellular to the intracellular compartment and mainly affect brain cells and lead to swelling, edema, and sometimes herniation. And that can even, even at higher risk of patient having intracranial pathology. Okay, so that's the main concern that hyponatremia can lead to this manifestation and complication and patient can die from that. So we need to prevent that. So you can guess that these complication will be higher with acute hyponatremia, right? Because simply something you just surprise the brain cells, they don't have to uh, time to adapt and suddenly become, become, they become swollen. So Acute hyponatremia is much more likely to produce such symptoms more dangerous compared to the chronic one. The chronic hyponatremia with the chronic hyponatremia, the brain cells slowly get swollen and they get adapted. Okay, so the symptoms risk of developing such symptoms will be less, right? Because you're giving the cells time to adapt to this swelling because it's slowly developing. Okay, so that's one thing. On the, other hand, on the other hand, when you correct the acute hyponatremia quickly, these cells will not have problem with that. They swell up quickly and they shrink quickly back to normal size, should, should not have problem. Well, the chronic one, because now they are adapted and over a prolonged period of time, they get swollen. If you quickly treat it, that will lead to sudden shrinkage of the cells and that can lead to what? The risk of osmotic demyelination syndrome. So the risk of this condition, as you can tell, is more or higher in chronic hyponatremia when you correct it quickly. Because you give the cell time to adapt to the swelling, I need to give it time to adapt to the new size, shrink it. So you need to shrink it slowly. If you shrink it pretty quickly, you can induce the osmotic demyelination syndrome. While here, if you correct the acute quickly, we should not have any problem because the cells um, swells up quickly and shrinks quickly. That should be okay. But risk of symptoms is more with acute hyponatremia compared to chronic hyponatremia. So this is the first thing. The second thing, based on this, do you expect that hypertonic hyponatremia will cause any symptoms and we need to worry about it. Based on what we study is hypertonic hyponatremia, there is a substance in the extracellular fluid here. There's increased tonicity, okay? Sodium is the same that will drag water here and cause low sodium concentration. So with hypertonic hyponatremia, we're getting the opposite effect. We're getting water from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular. So here, hyponatremia is not causing shift of fluid and is not causing swelling of the cells, brain cells. And that's why we don't really worry about the um, what we worry about here with acute and chronic hyponatremia and, and should not cause the hyponatremia symptoms and simply the treatment is directed and to the um, directed at the underlying problems hypertonic hyponatremia shift the fluid out of the cells which means what we're talking about here this exclusively belongs to what hypotonic hyponatremia now the whole focus the whole worry is about this so here this what we talked about here apply to hypotonic hyponatremia so let's start talking about treatment of hypotonic hyponatremia now you are having a case of hypotonic hyponatremia and probably what you've learned most of you the first thing we try to assess is their symptoms related to this is it symptomatic or not but really the most important things before assessing symptoms or not is 
Are we dealing with acute or chronic hyponatremia? So by definition, they said this is within 48 hours. And this is more than 48 hours or unknown onset. So if you don't know exactly when this hyponatremia started, then you should consider it, it belongs here. Here within 48 hours. Now, there are some conditions uh, that will, um, when you see it, you should suspect this is acute rather than chronic. And of course, this is easy if you are dealing with inpatients because you've been monitoring their sodium every day, you can tell the onset of hyponatremia. But the condition that should make you suspicious of acute hyponatremia is post-operative hyponatremia. And this should be easy because you should have a baseline sodium before their surgery and then being admitted to the hospital and you should be checking sodium and electrolytes every day on post-operative patients and be careful with the kind of fluid to use i have uh, probably two videos in this series on post-operative um, iv fluid resuscitation so make sure you watch them but if you have hyponatremia development post-operative patients most likely dealing with acute also psychogenic polydipsia if you think this patient has psychogenic polydipsia most likely you're dealing with acute hyponatremia because these patients they just suddenly start drink, drink water massive amount of water and these patients their sodium what you get now for sodium level it will be lower in a few hours because they still have large amount of water to be absorbed also ecstasy use drug use that can um, cause release of adh and also cause the patient to drink large amount of water this is you should consider acute and some say marathon runners or those who are having vigorous exercise and uh, drink large amount of water when you see these really conditions suspect acute hyponatremia now if you don't have any of these and you cannot tell the exact onset then you should assume you're dealing with chronic hyponatremia the next thing after deciding acute and chronic is how severe the the hyponatremia is are you dealing with mild and mild sodium 130 to 135 and usually these people they are asymptomatic if you have sodium at this level it's very unlikely sodium causing any problems moderate which is 120 to 130 and severe less than 120. You start thinking about symptoms once sodium drop below 30. Of course, the more severe the hyponatremia, the higher the risk of symptoms and the higher the urgency for us to treat this hyponatremia. So deciding acute versus chronic, looking at this number, this will take a second from you to decide. After this, symptoms. So this is the first question. This is the second. Third is the presence of symptoms. As we said, the reason we focus on whether acute or chronic, acute are much more likely to cause symptoms. And not just that. With acute, you could have mild symptoms and quickly these mild symptoms can deteriorate to severe symptoms and brain herniation. So any in acute, any symptoms, whether mild or severe, should be treated emergently. Severe, we all agree. Whether acute or chronic, you need to jump on that. In acute, any symptoms, whether mild, like what? Headaches, nausea, uh, vomiting, uh, fatigue, um, or severe symptoms. When I say severe symptoms, I mean obtundation and seizures mainly because these could be a, a special optimization that brain herniation is happening or about to happen so that's the importance of differentiation okay so severe symptoms let me just make it easy with severe symptoms and i mean here mainly seizures and decreased level of consciousness emergent treatment now the goal is based on we so acute, chronic, the, the, the hyperno with their mild, moderate, severe, and uh, the severity of symptoms. Now the goal is all of this to set our goals for treatment. The first goal is to 
prevent the uh, prevent further decrease in sodium concentration so this is the first goal right second prevent brain herniation and this is mainly risk in acute hyponatremia third relieve uh, symptoms and fourth prevent quick or rapid correction prevent osmotic demyelination so these are the four goals whenever we treat okay prevent further decrease all hyponatremic patients really will respond to water restriction that can hold further drop of sodium regardless really for all hypotonic hyponatremia but as i said you have to be careful because this can work but it doesn't make the sodium quickly rise so if you're dealing with problem like this prevent brain herniation relieving symptoms you need to act on that and you need a quicker way to increase that sodium what is the quicker way is three percent normal saline or hypertonic saline so how that works or when do we give it so we agree now any and this is only happens with sodium below 130 if the sodium above 130 do not consider that whether acute or chronic severe symptoms if the patient having severe symptoms with its seizures loss of consciousness we just talked about this then immediately you need to give three percent ns and you give a bolus of 100 cc bolus over 10 minutes and you can repeat times two after each bolus check bmp or sodium level the goal is to increase sodium concentration by four to six milli equivalent from baseline if that doesn't happen you repeat another bolus doesn't it? you can repeat up to three boluses total and make sure while you're giving hypertonic saline at any point to do sodium level every hour sodium level q1 hour once you stop the um three percent you can switch it to a q to two to four hours to prevent what the quick correction to catch it early if it happens also three percent there is no need for central line because some hospitals no we need the central line the the nurses or pharmacists but really it's safe to give through peripheral line so if they insist the central line tell them start the three percent through peripheral line until we get the central line because you do not want to delay uh, this when you think about three percent that means things are urgent or emergent so we all agree on this point here right now how about when we have mild symptoms mild symptoms we tend not to treat not to try to bring sodium up quickly in chronic hyponatremia but in acute if this is an acute hyponatremia as we said that means if you don't act now soon you will have seizures obtundation and brain herniation so even with headaches fatigue nausea in acute hyponatremia we need to treat it and the way we treat it exactly the same we did it here 100% of 3% 100 cc of 3% ns bolus over 10 minutes repeat bmp the goal is to achieve that 4 to 6 milli equivalent and then uh, if, if if not achieved you repeat the bolus and repeat and as i said in a level q1 hour and once you off the 3% q2 to q2 to 4 hours okay now in acute hyponatremia some argue that in acute hyponatremia some argue that if na is less than 130 even if they are a even if asymptomatic that you still need to bring their sodium by four to six milli equivalent quickly for the same concern that things will uh, deteriorate rapidly and the only difference here they say instead of 100 c you give 50 cc of three percent and as time is one actually try to bring the sodium uh, a little bit up and prevent further drop in sodium so these giving the three percent really it's 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 to relieve symptoms and to achieve the first goal which prevent further drop in sodium level so we achieved that and now we achieve the um uh, the, we achieved relief of symptoms with that now the other main thing is to prevent quick autocorrection what does that mean so let's say you have a patient with sodium of 120 right 
So, and now we give 3% and now it's at 25 and you are happy. So, our goal is to keep this for the first 24 hours. By any mean, you should not correct sodium more than 8 milli equivalent a day. And we need to be careful with it. Because even here, why is it there is an argument about this? Because you need to be careful and a lot of um, resident res at resident level or even attending level unless you are a nephrology you may not be able to recognize that these patients are auto correcting themselves unless you keep checking sodium because sometimes once you reverse the problem that caused that they start auto correction themselves how they they will start diuresing more their urine will be more diluted because whatever was switching on the adh now adh is switched off and those their sodium will come up on their own if you give more of this it will cause things it goes more than eight milli equivalent my suggestion to you if you get to the point that you think of three percent saline hypertonic saline and that's my advice to you is please call nephrology because at the end of the day they have much better experience and you really need nephrology in the, the most difficult part of this believe it or not is to keep this range of correction if like eight milli equivalent every day because most of the time it's you suddenly you see oh it's you pass that range then what do i do and that's what we're gonna talk about that soon